Alright, so let's do some lock picking. So I have just explained this to you, but I think it helps a lot to actually see, see it to really understand it properly. Um, and probably want you, once you actually get a chance at doing this yourself um, in the labs, again, this is going to make a lot more sense. But it is good to hear about it before you start doing the actual lock picking. Because if you just try and jump straight into it without understanding what's happening, um, it's very much more difficult than if you actually understand the concepts behind what's happening. OK, so we can see here this is the cutaway lock. So inside the cutaway, you can see that there are, um, you know, you can see the pins there. Try and get it to focus. So when we uh, insert the correct key, it forces the, um, the pins to line up at the shear line. So those key pins, which are the pins on the bottom, uh, match this key. So now the, the key will turn. So picking a lock is basically we're trying to um, When we pick a lock, we are aiming to be in that uh, situation where we've got, um, you know, the pins ending up. Uh, get there in the end. How's this? That's a bit better. We'll end up with the pins uh, above the shear line, the the driver pins above the shear line. So. Um, this obviously has all the pins in it. This board, this practice board, is um, set up so that we have a different number of pins in each of these. So we've got a one pin lock, a two pin lock, three pin lock, four pin lock, five pin lock. So it's super, super easy to pick the first pin because there's just one pin in there. So I'll just I'll start with that. So you can see, in order to pick a lock, <clears throat> start off by putting a tension wrench in. Usually you start off by basically just inserting the your um, hook pick. If it'll focus. So you take your hook pick, insert it in to the keyway, and you can just get a feel for it by pulling it along and feeling for where those pins are. In this case, it's just got the one pin right at the front, so you feel a little click at the very start of it. So picking the lock is super easy because uh, there's only one pin. We just apply a small amount of pressure, we find the pin, we basically push it until um, until the, well we just have to find that one pin and push it up and it's going to unpick it basically. Because though we push it up until the driver pin is above the shear line and then it turns. So easy. When there's more pins, it's a bit more complicated. So because there's a particular order in which you need to um, find the pins and push them up, because it's not perfectly machined, the, the pins are slightly different sizes and things. So when you apply the, the turning pressure, there'll be particular pins that are being hit first kind of thing. They, they get stuck first. Those are the ones you need to push until they click into place, and then you find the next ones that are stuck and you push those up. Um, the easiest way to do that is basically just start at the back and work forward and just keep going backwards and forwards. <coughs> so if we insert our... Um, so again, we just put a tension wrench in pla into place like this. <clears throat> Before we actually start picking, we would just um, insert the hook pick, get a feel, so you can hear it easier on this one. So you can hear that each of those are the, the pins. So in this case, let's try and get this as clear as possible. Put this yeah, because it might help force it to focus correctly. Again, maybe not. What's that? I think that's about as clear as we're going to get. Yep. So, insert the hook pick. You can see that we can basically move the pins using the hook pick. Now, if you're not applying any pressure to the tension wrench, they're just all fall back down. 
which is why we use the tension wrench. Apply a very small amount of pressure to the tension wrench. It's like holding down the key on a keyboard. Like you don't really need to push, you just rest your finger on it basically. Uh, if you push hard, then it's going to be really hard to pick the lock because you're working against that force. So it's just, just enough so that when you push the pins up, they stay there. So it doesn't need a lot of pressure. Um, and then we can basically start at the back. So we can, because this is a cutaway, we can see inside the lock. Obviously, you wouldn't normally be able to see in there. But you can see that back pin is in place. We can sort of see that. Um, and you basically move your way forward. So some of them will actually, rather than um, start again. So some of them, so this, this back pin is actually binding. So I push it up and it stayed up. And I basically just work my way forward. That one's not really binding, so I'll just move past it and just keep going. Um, so we find keys that are the pins that are binding and push them up. And then at the end, so I felt the, the, pin, the plug turn there slightly, so there's at least a few of them are in position already. Um, and I just do the same thing again. Start at the back, work my way forward, and see if I can get any more into position. So, let's see. That one, that second pin there is now binding. So you can like get that up into place. And just work my way forward again. things where sometimes you can do it really quickly other times it just takes a little bit longer there we go uh, so when you've picked the lock the the, the, um, the plug will turn because the the, um, the pins are lined, lined up on the shear line so if you're picking a real door lock it matters which direction you're turning the, the plug obviously if you're not then it doesn't matter where, where you're learning you can go either way and actually, if you, um, because of the, the way that um, the bind order is, on this lock it'll pretty much always be the same, but if I switch this to turn it in the opposite direction, the bind order will change on, on the pins because they are you know, slightly, slightly, ever so slightly irregularly shaped. So if we switch the, the, um, the side we're on, it's going to change the bind order, which is good for practicing as well. You get like, you know, you can use the same lock a few times and try different things on it. And that is actually all you need to know in order to pick uh, pin tumble locks. So in the labs, um, we've got all this equipment for you to, to play around with and to, to, to learn from. Um, and basically your challenge is to see whether you can get all the way through each of these locks um, in the time that you've got in the lab, essentially. So um, it, do, it does get quite challenging from about, for these two in particular are quite difficult to do. Um, I think all of you will definitely get the first two. <laughs> so um, yeah, are there any questions?